Yes, that's right. The motor is turning. Um, le- <laughs> I, I can't even speak. I'm so excited. Um, I'm off to Ralph's now to get more of an update because he has been plowing through it. And uh, there's a few other updates that he sent me as well. So I'll put those out through, uh, through the video today. My wife has taken Rusty. So I'm in an ice vehicle, which is quite apt for the 2030 ban U-turn, which I was really unhappy about. And if you'd watched my TikToks, you'd have seen that actually, you know, electric cars will prevail. The good electric cars, because there's some not so good ones out there, um, they are better than ice cars. It's as simple as that. And anybody that's not driven an up-to-date Tesla, let's say, you know, 2019 Tesla Model 3 and onwards, that's the type of good electric car, convenient, good range, efficiency, go and try it out. But let's get to Ralph's and find out what's going on with Wedgie. Right, I've just arrived at Ralph's. He's just finishing off because he's got a motor skills session going on at the moment, which is all about um, learning about whether it's mechanics or even on the battery side of things check it out motor skills I've put the website at the bottom of the uh, um, of the screen um, but yeah check it out if you want to increase your skills on cars whether it's petrol um, or electric great place to do it so we're back with Wedgie it's been a little while um, and um, thankfully uh, Ralph has finished his motor skills course. Don't forget to check it out. Um, Ralph, we, I, you sent me some videos. Some were more upsetting than others. Because as the viewers saw, one of uh, the first video I put up was the motor working. Working. Yeah. But you sent me another video of the motor not working. Check this out. What, what's it doing? I, I didn't quite understand. It looks broken. Um, it's not broken. It's just a mismatch between what the inverter is sending out and what the motor is doing. So there was a couple of problems originally. Um, it came with uh, a high voltage loom between the inverter and the, the motor. So yep. it came as a nice little package. Uh, but one of those phase wires was the wrong way around. Ah. So initially we thought it was the position sensor that could be wrong. So we had yep. a look at the position sensor. Uh, that one turned out to be absolutely fine. Um, but one of the phase wires actually between the motor and the inverter, um, they, they just put it in the wrong way around, which is very easily done. Okay. So we sorted that out and that get it to turn in the right direction. Um, the next thing is we need to build the car up so that we can actually drive it around the yard and that means uh, getting the brakes working all over it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Drive the car. Mm, yeah. <laughs> which will be exciting. And the reason for that yep. is we need to put the motor on under load yep. to check that the inverter is properly matched to the motor. Right, okay. Um, so th there's a very fine um, relationship between the position sensor in the motor and what the software in the inverter. So the inverter switches the coils on in the motor at exactly the right time. Okay. If it's slightly out of sync, it'll be switching the coils on at slightly the wrong time. And, and what the motor, will then? The motor will get It'll be less, less efficient, okay. so it'll get hotter. Worst case scenario is you get what's known as cogging. Uh, which is where yeah. it's going... Dum, 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 dum. Is that what it was doing earlier? Yeah. Right, um, yeah, that didn't look pretty. No, I don't think we'll get that, but you will get some noise if they're mismatched. So we need to right. put it on the load just to check that out. And then we can go through the uh, various millions of jobs we need to do to get the thing. Yes, you've been pointing out these millions of jobs, there's quite yeah. a few. And the first video that Ralph sent me was the motor cogging, and I must admit, I was a little bit, a little bit more than depressed when I first saw that video. But thankfully, Ralph has uh, worked his magic, and then it was flowing the motor, flowing, flowing yes. like a, like a aquatic waterfall. That's, um, that's enough of the analogies. Now. Sorry, sorry. Okay, shall we get it up? Shall we get it up and have a look at under? No, sorry. Yeah, it's just, it's take that. Every time I hear that noise. It gives me the shudders. No, no, that because every time I hear that noise, I think of when we were putting, taking the body off originally, and it was making all those cracking noises. Oh yeah, fun times. Yeah, it was a while ago now. I've <coughs> I've changed a bit since then. A few more greys. So. It looks so much more complete under here. 
Um, I mean, you know, first of all, we've got the chassis, uh, the body on top of the chassis, but there's so much more going on and uh, well, a bit of special tape. But you were going to, um, something up here, which was really, really interesting. Uh, we've got the charge controller. Yeah, so the, the little itty bitty charge controller there, uh, which is impressively small. Um, and a lot of that is because of the advancements in modern transistors and the such like. It's more efficient, it wastes less energy, so it doesn't need to be so big. Right. And that allows you to charge the car up, but also allows the car to run mains equipment yeah. off the socket, so you can do vehicle to load. Very impressive stuff, and uh, I thought it was quite amusing that it's actually at the same place that the original uh, fuel, fuel pump was. Yes, um, I think that's appropriate. Which, uh, yeah, tickled me slightly. So, um, so yeah, we've got some uh, orange cables not to lick. Yeah, yeah, there's no power on them at the moment. So um, we've got to run the cables from the charge port into the system, yep. um, from the charge controller into the batteries, um, from the multiple number of battery packs up to the um, uh, electrical box. Yep. Um, then we've got the orange cables from the inverter at the front um, going into the motor. Um, so there's a lot of orange cables to sort out. Yes. Um, and what we're doing at the moment is working out what's the best route to run them around and how we can support them so that they don't fret and uh, wear out in use. Um, and that means doing a number of things that are quite important. So between each one of the clamps that holds the orange cables on, the cable has to have a, a curve in it. Yes. Because otherwise, yeah. with thermal expansion, if you run the cable dead straight, it will start ripping the, the insulation off the cables eventually uh, as, the, as the years go by. Right. So there's quite a lot of detail in how you actually set up all the, the cabling. So you need to have a bit of giving it, basically. And uh, you've done these, obviously, because we can't alter the chassis. Yeah. I'm trying to find one now. Um, you've uh, 3D printed uh, cable. Here we go, there's one here. Yeah. Uh, cable. Uh, cable clamps. That's it, cable clamps. So they uh, two-part bolt together, hold the cable in place, and then they are literally tie-wrapped onto the chassis rail, so there is no modification of the chassis rail whatsoever. Very important for our yeah. friends at the DVLA. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. uh, Basically, got... they look like this. Ah! Here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, so you've got two parts there, they bolt together, and then cable ties go around that, and that holds it securely into the frame rail. Nice. And they're not from China? And they're not from China, they're from the office over there. There we go. And, uh, of course, we've got the blue blue cables as well, haven't we? <laughs> you know I love the blue cables. Yeah, they're not cables. No. They're coolant pipes. They are, yeah. Um, so we've got the coolant pipes coming from the, uh, the battery coolant plates and they go into manifolds, oh. um, which is where we join them all together. Yep. They are joined through adapters onto the main cooling pipes that go to the front. So uh, we're using the original TVR radiator. Wowzers. Which is a nice touch. Are you sure? Um, not yet. <laughs> uh, but, Repurpose, uh, yeah, reuse, yeah. recycle. Well, I like things like that. Yeah, um, absolutely. That was the whole idea of the project. Yeah. So that goes into a, an adapter we've made um, and that splits it down into the lower bore size pipes that go into the, the inverter, the motor, uh, the charge controller and the battery packs. Yeah. Wonderful stuff. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, but yeah, like you said, still a lot of uh, wiring going on. So uh, yeah, we're getting there. Yeah, the transmission tunnel is getting quite busy. Yes, yes, um, running all these... Sure uh, everything is safe and stowed out of the way so it can't vibrate and crack. No, absolutely. And uh, making sure nothing gets too close to the prop shelf. And um, I... Something that um, we've... Or I and we have together realised is the rear diff, it's one wheel peel, isn't it? It's an open diff, yeah. <sighs> Flipping hate open diffs. So turn one wheel, and they should all turn, right? Well, no. No, 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 it's turning the prop shaft. Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. Well, I'm going to have to find a solution for that. I found a 2.88 diff XJS power lock one. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned when I messaged you about it, you said that the uh, the acceleration would be less and it would be higher top end. Potentially higher top end. Um, so. That might work out better for your, your uh, energy. Well, that, I, that's what I was thinking. I mean, you know, after seeing Jack from Silent Classics uh, 240Z saying he's got 3.6, 3.8, 0.60, I'm, I'm not sure that the te uh, TVR is going to get anywhere close to that. So 
maybe I should be going for range instead of uh, uh, naught to 60 especially if it's going to be used as a as a more of a daily vehicle so yeah something to uh, ponder that one so here is the uh, v5 ralph okie dokie this would uh, be so great yeah. we can get this sorted out and sent off to the yeah number of former keepers 18. real true story there it is see i wasn't i wasn't bluffing 18 people have been dissatisfied with this car 18 people loved it i've told you this already ralph <laughs> come on now so what what do we do with the v5 then so basically there's a bit here that says what the vehicle details are now because we've not changed the suspension the braking system the axles the chassis in any way nope what we have to do is we have to notify them of the new engine number ah yes the motor number uh which will be the motor number yeah um sorry that one there okay um and the fuel type becomes electric coal 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 yeah according yeah. to many many uh second hand haters. coal yeah. second hand coal um, so we put electric there, we put the motor number there, yeah. but I have to write an engineer's report to go with it, right. explaining what we've done, where the motors come from, uh, details of the changes, so yeah. that they can say, all right, that does comply with the regulations. And then we send it off. Then we send it off. Then we pray. Then we pray. Yes. It depends what mood they're in. And what, yeah, what, what the weather's like, really. Yeah, whether they accidentally lose the forms. Yeah. So as you can see, thanks to Ralph, we're really motoring on with the project now. So, you know, be, be done in a matter of days, won't it, Ralph? I'll say no more. Um, so yeah, I can't wait for the next uh, update because I've got a feeling that there's going to be some really exciting things to uh, check out. See you next time. Thanks for watching.